Well, hello everybody, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to another edition of Making It Simple. I hope you're doing great today on this beautiful Wednesday. As we get back into our study that we started yesterday from the book of Proverbs on the wisdom for life. As I shared yesterday, it is not my wisdom uh, that I'm sharing with you, but rather what God is showing us clearly through His Word. I want to apologize yesterday as I look back uh, after you know, putting it out and whatever, I realized the quality of that video was not as good as one that I would normally put out. Uh, the audio was not in sync with me, so it looked almost like an old Chinese movie. Uh, you heard the voice and then the lips would come later, so I am sorry for that. I think there was a technical glitch uh, with my equipment yesterday, but hopefully today uh, we don't have that same problem. Wisdom for life. When we think of that word wisdom, it, it simply it really has a simple meaning. It is the application of knowledge. What what have we learned? What do we learn? But then what what do we do with it? See, having knowledge is just that. It is a possession. It is, you know, again, as a, as a whole uh, plethora, there's our big word for the day, um, of information and things that we have dwelling within the space between our ears. But what do we do with it? I want us to look today, as we begin to look deeper into this passage from the first part of Proverbs here in chapter 1, of purpose and profit. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday. And again, understanding we're not just talking about when we hear the word profit today, we immediately think of financial things. Certainly within the church world, we think of others who uh, have the ability or the at least the perceived ability to foretell something. Um, that's a whole different that's a whole different lesson, and we'll talk about that at another time, maybe. But I want us to look at those two words today ever so briefly as we begin this lesson: purpose and profit. Now, all things have a purpose. Now, I realize that sometimes we struggle with that because some things we look at in this world, and we could get we could get all kinds of different ways with that. But everything's here for a reason. Everything has a reason. The good and the bad. Uh, one having more power over the other, or one having more benefit than the other. What have you? We could get in, but everything has a purpose. Now, when we look at the Scripture, again, we find there's a purpose. It is to lead our life. It is to improve our life. It is to help us gain knowledge wherewith we use to grow in a relationship with the Lord, which allows us to obtain wisdom. Solomon the writer of the Proverbs, he was given what one would call a momentous opportunity, an incredible opportunity, as God would say to him, what do you desire? In other words, what do you want? Can you imagine that? Just just pause on that for a moment and think. God is, is speaking to you. He's offering you the proverbial blank check, if you will. Tell me what you want. Tell me what I can give to you. The choices are almost endless. They're infinite. They're they're. they're, they're unimaginable of which direction we could go. Would it be, you know, wealth or fame or celebrity or some superpower or, you know, to be able to fly or I mean, we, we could go down a proverbial wish list that could be, you know, again, depending on how our mind is bent, where our thoughts are at, it could go all over the place. Solomon said, I want wisdom. wisdom. Think about that. I want to be able to properly apply what I learn. Wow. I want what I learn to have purpose so that it creates a profit. 
Now think about that. When we learn something, and then we're able to apply it, and it creates something. We learn how to cook, and we're able to create a, a great meal for our family. We learn how to drive, and we're able to take a trip or take ourselves back and forth to work. We learn to play an instrument. We're able to provide you know, worship, or we're able to provide entertainment. For it's, an, it's, it's a never-ending cycle that we could use all kinds of examples to properly apply what we learn. Think of how this, how this pours over into our spiritual life. If we truly learn the things of God, which requires that we're willing to listen, and then we properly apply them to our life, the profit comes in how it benefits others. That's where we see an enormous need for what we're going to talk about throughout the lessons of this study. The powerful words of the book of Proverbs, they're filled, filled from chapter 1 on so through with life lessons. And, and as I've learned through my ministry now, over all of these years, that's the key. Keeping it real. Making it simple. That's not only why I call this show Making It Simple. But if you know me personally, or you've ever sat under my teaching, you know that this is how I teach as well. Meeting everyone where they are is vital, because that's what Jesus did. Jesus met the woman at the well. Jesus met the beggar at the gates, whatever the case. All the different, the blind man, you know, here, the crippled man there. We are surrounded by so many in every different level of need that we could even imagine. Expecting that person to be in the same place that we are spiritually, well, to be honest with you, is kind of foolish because we weren't always there either. We struggled with those times of desperation, those times of hopelessness, those times of not having any wisdom at all. It's a process. It's a step-by-step -step place of getting there. That is not an arrogant statement. That is not a, I'm smarter than you, or in a, I'm more spiritual than you. I'm, no, no, that's pious, and that's, that is wrong. That's not of God. When we look at life lessons, it is, again, learning. Wisdom does not come until we apply. The insight that we see here on finding purpose and creating profit is amazing when we allow it to sink in. What we have to conclude at the end of all of this as we study this is we need the wisdom of God in order to lead profitable lives. You may want to write that down. We need the wisdom of God to lead profitable lives. In other words, friends, if, if we're going to accomplish something in this life, and I don't mean just a, a career goal or climb Mount Everest or win the Boston Marathon or whatever, but if we're going to leave something behind, if we're going to be a comfort or a profit or a help to others, it all goes back to what we've learned and how we apply it. If, if what we have learned is conniving and scheming and, and, and deceit, and that's what we pass on to others, then that cycle continues. If what we have learned is good and profitable for others and to benefit their lives and draw them closer to Christ, that is what we leave to others. When we, when we understand doing this on our own life it, it, as it is, we develop and create the things that we surround ourselves with. If we surround ourselves, again, with dishonesty, negativity, uh, scheming, and, and, and all those other things, that, that, that's what we create, a continual cycle of that. And that is equating what Jesus talked about, building a house on the sand. And eventually, that house falls down. But when we build our house on the rock, the wisdom of God, that house will stand 
regardless of what comes, no matter how strong the wind blows, how hard the rain pounds, it stands. Purpose and profit. How does this work? What, what is being said here? The purpose of the Proverbs, as we study through all of them, and as we look through the words that were given, we see that the purpose of it is to teach the wisdom of God. That's what it's for. That's what it's there, to teach the wisdom of God. Again, we can look just briefly. It says, to know wisdom and instruction. Okay, that's the knowledge that we gain. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive instruction and wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Think about what the, the purpose is to learn. To learn the wisdom of God. Because God's application of knowledge is exactly how we learn. Many struggle in this life by seeking their purpose. Of course, popular books have been written about it, and Bible studies have been written about it, and church movements started over that very word. The why am I here? What is my purpose? And also, and, I, and I'm not going to get into glorifying that, but everybody, believer or non-believer alike, looks for their purpose. Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? But friends, when we come to know God, when we come to be a child of the King, when we become to understand whose we are and who we serve, and we become that ambassador, that representative, we, we don't just have a purpose. We've got a certain purpose, and that is to understand and to fully grasp that we need God's instruction, we need God's wisdom, so that we can be a proper ambassador, so that we can be a proper representative and show others not just what we've learned, but what we've become. Giving our hearts and lives to Christ is not just a statement. It is not just a regurgitation of something that someone else has told us to say, but rather a voluntary response to the call of God on our heart when we hear those two beautiful words, follow me. Because when we when we respond to that, and if we're truly following, then we begin to learn. We begin to emulate what we see, what we hear, what we watch. And as we learn, we grow. And as we grow, we move from knowledge to wisdom. Because then we're applying and using that which we learned which begins to build a profit. Everything has a purpose that should result in a profit. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you for joining me here at Making It Simple.